Hello, I'm Atuba George now. This is just getting sweeter and sweeter by the day. Now, yesterday I was telling you something about Jesus. The plan for Jesus to come into the world was finished on the sixth day of God's creation, in the day that God made man. See? So, I'm saying this to tell you that Adam and Eve, before Adam and Eve were physically formed, God has already planned for Jesus to come. The question then is to come and do what? And that's the right question to ask. So now we go into creation, what, what God did with Adam and Eve. Now what am I teaching? I'm teaching you the knowledge of God. See, Jeremiah said, if you want to, be, if you want to boast, if you want to glory, glory in this, that you understand him and know him. Now you cannot understand him until you understand his word. You cannot understand him until you understand the way he speaks. Jesus said to those Jews, you know, he says, why don't you understand my speech? In John chapter 8, he says, because you do not know my words. See, you don't understand my speech. So when I say something, you quote me out of context because you don't understand me. Now, that's the same thing we've done to the word of God. We've done to the Bible. See, we don't understand it because we don't really know him. Now, when we know him, you know, the, 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 has this ever happened to you? You knew something in scriptures. And then you began to fellowship with the Lord. Maybe yes, you know. And then one day, you look at a scripture that you have read before. And I said, no, this couldn't have been what God have said. God couldn't have said this. See, you know, for example, you know, that's how one day, you know, you know there, was a, there was a period uh, certain scriptures came to light in, in, in the body of Christ. You know. For example, you know, when, when prosperity came to its peak, you know, people began, preachers began to talk a lot about prosperity. Oh, God wants us to prosper. One of the scriptures that we were so, we were amplifying so much was money answered all things. How many of you remember? Yeah, sometime, sometime, from, I think from the year 2000 upwards, yeah. And then some of those scriptures were scriptures that, I mean, it just came to our fingertips. Money answered it all. So that's why you must have money. You know, we, we, we believe that because we saw it in the Bible. So it in the book of Ecclesiastics. It says money answered all things. So you won't pray. The Bible says money answered all things. So you must have money. So we, we prayed prayers. We, we declared words. We Because we're looking at this. If money answered all things, we must have the money. But hey, you know one time, I was fellowshipping with the Lord and then the Lord was teaching me some things. And then I thought to myself, hold on. There is no way God could have said money answers all things. There is no way he could have said that. And then I went before the Lord. I said, Lord, I have a problem. Based on this thing you have taught me now because I have grown in him. Based on this thing you have taught me, how come you would still say Money answer it all. Thing. And then the Lord spoke to me immediately and said, I didn't say that. <laughs> Praise God. I, but it's in the Bible. Go look for it. So I, I went there and I looked at it. And then I got several translations to look at. Then I realized God never said that. Neither did Solomon say it. Solomon was reprimanding the rulers of that day. And then he said, Look, Instead of these guys to do what is right, they spend their time enjoying and feasting. And they say, look, tax money will answer for it all. He was reprimanding them. He wasn't saying a statement of truth. But because of lack of understanding, we ran with it and began to amplify that. Praise God. Now, it's the same thing we do with several scriptures. So, Jesus, I was saying, Jesus, God planned for Jesus to come on the sixth day of his creation. So, when Adam and Eve was formed, remember what God said in Genesis chapter 1, is, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Right? Alright. Then God formed Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 2. And then he said, and God, Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, and the Lord God formed man. Watch this. This is Genesis chapter 2. Now, this is the real, the, the physical creation now. Remember, it took generations. That's what he told us from verse 4. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground 
and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul understand this it says man became what a living soul what did god say in genesis chapter 1 let us make man in our image and after our likeness but now he created man here says man is a living soul now is a living soul the image and likeness of god who is god we know that god is a spirit so how come god who is a spirit will make man from the dust of the ground and call him a living soul and he didn't call him a man became a spirit someone says about living soul and spirit they are the same thing no they are not study scriptures carefully they are not the same thing adam and eve we are not made in the image and likeness of god they were not question so did god lie no he didn't the same way you see everything he starts begins from somewhere and then there is the perfection of that thing so you don't judge from the beginning and say this is the perfection no the seed of perfection might be in it, but it is not fully, for example, you, you see a, uh, a caterpillar, for example, and then someone tells you, this is a butterfly. I say, butterfly, no way. Butterfly has wings. This doesn't have wings. So this is not a butterfly. But you've got to wait for, the, for that caterpillar to go through all the processes and then becomes a butterfly. See, it cannot fly in that state. Now, if it dies in that state of a caterpillar, you don't say, oh, a butterfly just died. I, I don't know if you're getting what. It has to go through all the phases of transformation. Praise God. You know, we've got to stop here, but I'm going to continue tomorrow. I'll see how the Lord's going to help us tomorrow. This is Atuba Judge. God bless you. Bye-bye.